Just to add on this edition, just some review points, my guest today is Cindy Tarchis from the ADA of Minnesota, this being Employment uh, Disability Employment Awareness Month. She's a great guest with a wealth of knowledge, a lot of fun too, so I hope you stay tuned for that. Nick, who's your guest going to be? My guest this time, Mark, is uh, Ron Goldstein. Uh, Ron owns and operates a company called GB Kids that help people connect to all kinds of adapted bikes, getting out there and um, experiencing recreation in new ways. Uh, so really excited. Sounds great. Joan? I have a fantastic uh, guest today, uh, Rachel Garrity uh, from the Minnesota Department of Health, talking about COVID. Yes, it's back and all the vaccines that are available and we're even going to throw in another new virus we can talk about as well. So lots sounds, to cover. Sounds great. All that more is just ahead on Disability Viewpoints. Welcome back to Disability Viewpoints. I'm Mark Hughes in our 25th year. With me today is Cindy Tarsha. She is now the director of the American Disabilities Act in Minnesota. Welcome to the show. We're going to talk about a number of things, October being, or uh, this being Disability uh, Employment Month, uh, enhancements and accommodations and all kinds of things. So, Cindy, welcome to the show. Is there anything you want to say before we get going? Uh, no, just happy National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Happy 50th anniversary of Section 504 and the 1973 Rehab Act. And happy 33rd anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So lots to celebrate here. Wow, that, that's a lot said right there. Um, well, we want to start this with, are there any real emerging trends regarding employment and the ADA right now? Well, you know, you, you would think after 33 years of the ADA that there wouldn't be, but there really is um, some exciting things and some things that have happened post-pandemic. You know, pre-pandemic, you know, employers sometimes uh, were a little more uh, iffy about providing accommodations of like a hybrid uh, workforce or working from home, teleworking, that type of thing as an accommodation for people with disabilities. But uh, post-pandemic, because employers uh, saw what a cost savings it was and it was a, a way to uh, retain employees, a uh, way to close down big office buildings and have their workers work from home, um, what has happened is that it is now becoming a very uh, viable uh, option for people with disabilities to get uh, telework if they need it as a reasonable accommodation. So yeah, that's yeah. one emerging trend. The second one um, that came post pandemic is that in 2021, the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, recognized long COVID as a disability under the ADA. So because this diagnosis, which can be uh, devastating for people and really changes their lives, especially when it comes to their work life, um, they are able to uh, get accommodations for some of the symptoms of long COVID. Um, Kate Murray, who is wonderful, and, and you'll be meeting also another wonderful staff person soon from the Minnesota Department of Health uh, that have expertise in long COVID. We've been doing a lot of presentations to employers on accommodations specific for long COVID and what that looks like in 2023 going forward. So those are kind of emerging trends that I would see uh, to look for. Well, that sounds great. And we will be looking forward to them. And, you know, we'll cover them as they become available. What uh, do people need to know when disclosing a disability and or asking for an accommodation these days? That's a good question. So really, the only reason that you would need to disclose that you have a disability is if you are asking for a reasonable accommodation. You need to, you basically just have to disclose, um, you know, what Im impairment or is is it being caused by the disability? You don't have to actually say what the uh, disability or the diagnosis is if you choose not to. Um, so that would be the one reason. But the two other reasons that somebody may disclose they have a disability at some point is one, sometimes employers have additional benefits, perks. They may have a, a job fair or equipment fair. Sometimes they have a closer parking spot or transportation or whatever that employer uh, chooses to provide or to explain an unusual circumstance or phenomenon. Uh, let's say you have a non-apparent disability like diabetes 
and your blood sugars are not going well, or your meds are your 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 meds aren't going well, and it may appear that you know that you're coming to work impaired or under the influence of alcohol or whatever that may be. So yeah. if something's not right, um, better to disclose than not to disclose. Yeah, and it's better to know the fact than guess what's wrong too, and that happens, and then it just causes some problems, I'm sure, in the employment world. Is there anything an employer does or does not have to do per reasonable accommodation? Uh, that is also a good question. So, you know, the, the, the employer has to, you know, look at the accommodation request, have the interactive process with the individual, um, kind of a give and take, a compromise, come back with a solution. Uh, if they say no, they have to say what the a new hardship is. That's a pretty high bar for not providing uh, that accommodation. Um, what the and again, the employee has to be able to do the essential functions of the job with or without an accommodation. The ADA is not an entitlement program, I and mean, you still have to be able to do the job. It only again, goes so with, far. Without yeah. an accommodation. But here's what's interesting: um, what, things that the employer does not have to do. You know, they have rights as well, and the, they don't have to remove an essential function as an accommodation. They don't have to lower production standards unless the standards are lower for everybody. Uh, they don't have to uh, hire additional staff to do part of the job if the employee is unable to do that. Uh, they they don't have to switch supervisors or provide personal use items. Uh, those are things they, they don't have to do, but they do have to engage in that interactive process and uh, find uh, some type of accommodation that may work for that individual employee at that time. Right. And our last question is, who should people contact if they need assistance during the process or want to file a complaint? Well, again, you're, you're, <laughs> you're asking all great questions. So, yeah. you know, if the individual, let's say they're newly diagnosed or they, this is a different type of job and they really don't know about, you know, what accommodations may or may not work, they, they can call me. I think you have my resources at the end, but also my contact information, but also the Job Accommodation Network, they are fabulous. They know everything and anything about accommodations, about long COVID, about different uh, types of equipment, where you can get it. So that's simply, you know, uh, askjan.org if you want to go um, on their website. Very simple to remember. Otherwise, I think I have their contact information. Sounds, if, so, yeah. Oh, I'm, so I just want to point out, but if it doesn't go well, and somebody feels that they do need to file a complaint um, against their employer, and we always try to work it out, mediate all these things. Um, we have two options here in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota Department of, of, of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. They have 13 protected classes and disabilities, one of them, or the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Mm -hmm. You could either call our local office here in Minneapolis or uh, the national number, and okay. I think Good, you know. great. It's been a great interview. We have a few seconds left. I want to offer you the final word segment. Anything we might have missed that you wanted covered? Well, I don't think I could have talked any faster for my 15 minutes of fame oh, here. Oh, so. well, you're great. You're great. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, oh, I know. I just wanted to say, if employers are watching or anybody's watching this at this time, that accommodations really, most of them are $500 or less or cost nothing like a modification to a policy or procedure or something like the flexible work schedule. Right. So nobody has to be afraid of the accommodation process at this Not point. Not at all. It's, it's the way, right? All right. At this time, I'd like to thank you for being on our show, and I'd love to have you on again. And you're always Thanks. welcome. You're always welcome. I see you're at home there, but you're always welcome to be here in, in the studio thank at any you. time. So anytime you have a uh, uh, need to be on here, you're always welcome. So thank you, thank Cindy, you. for what thank you do, and we'll talk again soon. Cindy Tarsh so is the. See, you're welcome, Cindy Tarsh is the director of the ADA of Minnesota. And we'll be right back with more Disability Viewpoints in a minute. Welcome back to Disability Viewpoints. I'm your co-host, Nick Wilkie. With me today is my friend and colleague, Ron Goldstein. Ron works for a really, really awesome organization uh, that he's going to tell us a little bit more about. On a personal level, I got to know Ron because I recently got into doing some biking again, and Ron was able to help me get uh, get back on my bike and go 
go at new levels of distances at, and new challenges. So, Rod, happy to have you with me here today. Thanks, thanks Nick. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, and uh, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out with a, a good question here. How did, you, uh, how did you first get started in the field of biking and adapted biking options for people with disabilities? Uh, well, it was in about 2000, and uh, I have a daughter with special needs, and we were looking for a bike that both of us could ride. And so I purchased a bike from Germany, uh, call, a company called Haza. And uh, it was, my daughter rides in the front, I ride in the back. And we've been, you know, riding for so many years and people ask, well, you know, where did you get the bike? And I thought, well, maybe I should start selling them, you know, because <laughs> they're really well designed and manufactured. And so I uh, was partner with another gentleman. And so we started gbkids.com, uh, an internet e-commerce business. And uh, we sell, uh, you know, the bikes and, and special needs joggers. And so, it, you know, it's kind of morphed over the years. And, and uh, it's really kind of been, it's been my passionate business, right? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm, I'm really, really glad to hear that you got your start with that, with that company. Because, as you know, that's the, that's the model of bike that I have as well. Um, question Question just for a little bit more background. Um, how, do you, how do you typically assess the needs of the individual that, that approaches you and is looking to get on, get on for the first time, for the next time, or even the time after that? Well, I, because I've been involved in the disability industry for so many years, um, and you know, having gone through working with like Gillette Children, sometimes they'll refer uh, a client that they've done a therapeutic rec assessment with, uh, or Courage Kenny uh, Rehab. They'll send a client over after they've been assessed. We have our bikes at Courage Kenny, and uh, we'll have our bikes at Alina when um, Gillette has you know starts their rehab unit. And so they refer um, clients to us, and most of the um, assessments already been done. Okay. But what I try and do is I look at the rider and, and what their needs are and what their abilities are. We have some uh, people who have you know, limited use of one arm, so we'll put the controls on the other side. Some people have um, issues with keeping their feet on the pedals, so we'll put adaptive pedals on to keep their feet in the pedals. Mm -hmm. um, and some, some kids or adults can't steer or brake, so they'll do a tandem bike with their spouse or their parent. Okay, super cool. Um, your previous answer went into this a little bit, but it sounds like there's a lot of different styles that you can work with in terms of bike options. There are, we have both the tandem, and then we have what I call the Delta bikes, which are three wheelers. And our bikes are a little bit higher profile, as you know, mm -hmm. so they're easier to get into. Okay. So if we have somebody who's in a wheelchair, they can transfer right from the wheelchair over to the, the um, chair on the bike. Mm -hmm. And then um, our bikes will connect together, so you can get two or three or four bikes. And I have one customer um, that's a mom, has two boys who are on the spectrum, and they got three bikes, and so they train around town cool. in their, with their three bikes. Cool. Yeah. That, that's awesome, Ron. Um, historically, um, how, do, um, how do people typically pay for these things? Some people use private funds. Um, some people will use waiver money if they have waiver money, um, grants. Um, there are some nonprofits that will donate some money to, um, you know, to purchase the bike. Okay. Um, so it depends on the individual. Gotcha. Uh, what, working in the community, like funding streams are always one of those one of those things that we always seek more of. As, as an employee for the Center for Independent Living, I'm always trying to help people turn over rocks here or there to find an appropriate stream that's gonna allow them to do more mm -hmm. and do what they wanna do. So those are, those are good points to make. Um, 
like get, getting on down here, Ron, um, what would you say is your, what's your favorite part of all the work you've done in the last 23 years? There's one story that I really liked. It was a, a mom with a boy. Her son had uh, autism and they couldn't get him on a bike. And so they came over and we sat him on the bike and we put him in the, the shoulder straps and his hands were up like this. And as the mom and the boy took off, his hands kind of slowly went down, grabbed the handles, and he had this big smile on his face. So it's those types That's of awesome. experiences that kind of keep me going. That's awesome. Um, I can even say, like for myself, uh, going through you to get the, the e-modification that I wanted on my, on my, um, my bike setup, um, you know, the level of innovation, the ability to go further, um, you know, to go for a bike ride and not have it just be really, really close to home. So it was a big deal. Um, and um, we've got some, we've got some, some footage that um, we'll show our, video, our viewership a little bit as well as some stills um, so they can, they can see a little bit more about the bike that, the bike that I have. Um, and then finally, Ron, um, what would you say the best way to connect with you is? Just go to our website. It's G as in good, B as in boy, kids, K-I-D-S dot com. That's the best way. And there'll be a contact form okay. um, so that you can fill that out and that comes right uh, to me. And then usually nine times out of ten, once I get that contact form, I contact them within 24 hours. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and then the the one the one additional thing that I would say, you guys, um, guy like Ron, been in this business for a long, long time, is just a really good resource for even discovering what what your possibilities are. Um, if you've got something, um, guy like Ron might be able to modify. Um, if you've got something that could be a start, um, but even if you're looking at something new. Um, he comes into it with an open mind and is very, very approachable. Ron, thank you so much for being on the show today, and I hope this generates some, some questions and, and maybe even some, uh, some new ideas for our viewers. So, thanks, Nick. Thanks so much. You bet. We'll, uh, we'll be back with more Disability Viewpoints after these messages. I'm so glad you're able to come. Um, it seems like it's kind of like Groundhog Day. Here we go again, right, with COVID. And, um, but it seems like it's um, a little bit better footing right now than it was two years ago when we were jumping into COVID. Right now, um, we, we are very fortunate to have um, a new vaccine um, that protects against the newest variant. Mm -hmm. on COVID-19, and that vaccine is available for anyone six months or older. Um, we also um, have access to at-home COVID tests um, through the federal government. Right now, folks can order four free tests sure. um, from the federal government, and they can order tests for free through the Minnesota Department of Health as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as always, some of the most basic things um, work the best. So wearing a mask when you're in a crowded area um, with a lot of airflow, washing <clears> your <throat> hands, um, changing your clothes. If you've been um, uh, out in the public, um, can do a lot to keep you protected. Did you say changing your clothes? Oh, um, yep, yeah, just like, um, same as washing your hands. If you've mm -hmm. been in um, an area that you might have been exposed, just put on something fresh. Right. Wow. So 
um, interested and hadn't thought about that and so forth. Um, um, the testing kits are always a, a challenge for some people, getting them open and so forth. So I don't know if, if there's anything down the line we can do to make the test kits easier um, for some of us to open, but that's certainly a challenge. But so we've got, uh, we will put up on our screen the uh, opportunity to get those free test kits because that's vital and so forth, def definitely. Um, so um, with this new variant, um, what's the name of this variant? So the um, variant that is circulating the most right now um, mm -hmm. is one of the Omicron mm -hmm. variants. Um, and uh, the strains that are out right now are closely related to a variant called XDV15. Oh. Um, and the great news is that the updated vaccine um, Mm -hmm. protects against this variant, um, and the available data that we have right now shows that the new vaccine holds up very well um, and provides protection, even against the newer variants that are out there right now. Wow. Oh, okay. That's um, fantastic to know. Um, it's interesting um, how these variants just keep um, coming at us, so and I'm glad the health department was able to figure it out, or the CDC to keep making these vaccines and so forth. Um, well, let's move on and talk about the other um, variant of some sort that's out there, virus, I should say, the RSV. What can you tell us about that? Because that seems to be more, more new, and it was prevalent last year with kids, but it sounds <laughs> like now some of us adults should be getting the vaccine for this. Absolutely. So, um, RSV is another uh, viral respiratory infection, and um, anyone can get RSV, but um, the people who are most at risk for severe outcomes are older adults. Um, and so right now, there is an RSV vaccine that's been approved for adults who mm -hmm. are six years and older. Mm -hmm. um, and there are also options for protecting very young babies and pregnant people from RSV. Um, if someone falls into that group of very young or a pregnant person, they should talk to their health care provider and see if the RSV the vaccine would be recommended. Okay, so one more vaccine. And I know they're um, offering at these different locations, you can get multiple injections, vaccines in the same day, is that correct? Yes. That's amazing. Um, I don't know if I have enough limbs to, to, to put up with the sore arms, <laughs> you know, um, for all those shots, but <clears throat> that's fantastic that we've got these um, different types of vaccines to help with the viruses. Um, with this RSV, um, with, uh, I know with some of the COVID vaccines in the past, people did not like the side effects. Do you know us that there's many side effects with this vaccine? The best way um, really to judge that is based on how a person reacted in the past. Um, and if you would like more information on that, um, I can definitely get it for you. But um, I know when we vaccinate folks, um, we always ask them, how did you react before? Um, sure. And we let them know that they can expect a probably a similar reaction um, with the new vaccine. Right, right. right. You know, it seems like we haven't heard anybody really, um, groups of people saying it's horrible and horribly ill from whatever direction. Um, why don't we talk about, um, before we've got a run here, is how do people find out more information about COVID, RSV, and all the wonderful viruses that keep it, trying to get at, at us? Is there a website <laughs> or a phone number? Yeah, so for vaccination, um, the best thing to do is talk with your health provider. Um, and if you are uninsured or you don't 
have a provider home, um, you can contact your nearest community health center, um, and you can find information about those at mnhealthcenters.org. Um, for comments specifically, folks can also call the Minnesota Department of Health COVID-19 public hotline, and the number for that is one 431 2053 and the COVID hotline is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Great. And, mm -hmm. So, well, that's fantastic. All that good information just off the top of your head. I'm, I'm impressed. Thanks for the good information. We'll get this out to all the folks in the disability community and others. And um, this will be fantastic information to use. Thanks again for coming yeah. on. Yep. I appreciate it. Great. Have a great day. Yep. We'll be right back after these messages. Well, that's another uh, Disability Viewpoint show for today. And uh, I'd like to thank Cindy Tarshish, the director of the ADA Minnesota, for coming on and telling us a lot we didn't know about the ADA and, and uh, employment accommodations and so on and so forth. There's a lot of information in that segment, so we hope you'll uh, please respond to the ADA Minnesota if you have any questions. Nick, how about your guest? I, I really enjoyed... Uh conversation with Ron Goldstein. I really hope that our viewers and the community get a chance to not only see what his organization has to offer, but also um, check out the check out the B-roll that we have going on. You'll be able to see um, me actually biking in the community. You'll um, be actually able to see him going back to his youth again. That's right. Exactly, my friend. <laughs> um, so I hope people enjoyed it. Um, and uh, the world's out there. Go explore while we can. Great, and Joan? Well, another great segment here on COVID. Uh, Rachel Garrity from the Minnesota Department of Health was with us um, talking about um, good vaccines available and even the new RSV um, virus that is out and how we all need to be looking at that, getting a vaccine for that if need be as well. So it was all good knowledge and information. And before we go, I want to, again, make sure that everybody knows about the uh, Access Press Dinner come up on November 3rd at the McNamara Center on the U of M campus, 200 Oak Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Please visit the website, Access Press, or contact Access Press to get your ticket. They're going fast, and I'm sure Joan will let me out stay out late that night. So we'll all be over there having a good time. So we'll see you there. And we'll see you next time on Disability Viewpoints. Before we go, I'd like to thank... Joan Wilshire and our, our guest hosts and all our guests today and Nick Wilkie for being on here. It was great. We hope you to see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye now.